Good morning, brothers and sisters. I pray you are all well and safe. It's a joy to bring God's word to you this morning. Last Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection, and in our time together, I'd like for us to consider what the resurrection means for us. Our scripture reading is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Colossae was a city in Asia Minor about 100 miles east of Ephesus. The church there was started by one of Paul's students, Epaphras. And while Paul was in prison in Rome, the church at Colossae was attacked by false teaching. It's known simply as the Colossian heresy. The Colossian heresy was a mix of Jewish legalism, which said that circumcision is necessary for salvation, that the Sabbath and the feasts and the festivals must be observed, as well as Gnosticism, which taught that Jesus is a powerful spirit and that there is a secret knowledge higher than Scripture necessary for salvation. This is a very dangerous false teaching. Epaphras was so concerned about this heresy that he made a long journey from Colossae to Rome to visit Paul. And Paul wrote this letter from prison to warn the Colossians that this false teaching was an attack on Christ and an attack on the gospel itself. Listen to what Paul says about Christ in chapter 1. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him. And in chapter 2, verse 9, For in him, in Christ, all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. Christ is God. He is the creator. He holds all things together. He's the head of the church. He's the first fruit of the resurrection. And these truths are foundational to our faith. We especially remember the resurrection during Holy Week. But the resurrection isn't just something to celebrate once a year. It's something that should change the way we live every day. So this morning's message is about living the resurrected life. And there are two main points we'll see in these four verses. First, the resurrection demands a heavenly perspective. And second, the resurrection promises a heavenly promotion a heavenly perspective, and a heavenly promotion. Let's look at the first. Chapter 3 of Colossians completes a picture begun back in chapter 2. Look with me at verse 12. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised up with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Chapter 2 basically says that since you have been buried with Christ, these are the things that you should not be doing. Sin, worldliness, listening to false teaching, man-made religion. And then chapter 3 says that because you have been raised in Christ, these are the things that you should be doing. Chapter 3, verse 1. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above. And it's more of a statement than a question. If you have put your trust in Christ alone, then you have been raised with Christ. As a Christian, the resurrection makes every difference. Look with me at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse 14. And if Christ has not been raised, if he has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith also is in vain. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. 
then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have only hoped in Christ in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied. Think about that. If Christ has not been raised, there is no freedom from sin. If Christ has not been raised, there is no hope of eternal life. If Christ has not been raised, our faith is dead. But what if Christ is raised? Romans chapter 6. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him, in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This passage speaks of our union with Christ. Christ died to cancel the power of sin. If we are still in Christ, we still have our sinful flesh, but that sin no longer has the same hold on us. In the same way, just as Christ was raised from the dead, never to die again, so too we are raised with him to newness of life. The resurrection changes everything, and the picture of that change is baptism. A person is immersed, illustrating the death of the old life, and then brought up out of the water a picture of new life in Christ. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above. You have been raised with Christ, therefore keep seeking the things above. Before translating this into English, it says, the things above be constantly seeking, not the things here on earth. The Christian who has risen with Christ has new priorities and a new direction. Our aim and our desires should no longer be earthly things, but what is heavenly and eternal. The Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 3, but whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, when the quarantine ends, what are you looking forward to? What gets you excited? Vacation? Shopping? Career? Going out to eat or do something? Socializing? Do you desire people's respect? Do you want to be well-liked in the church? Or is it holiness, communion with God, knowing Christ, becoming more like Him? This time at home is a perfect time to evaluate, am I really seeking the things above? You say, how do I do that? How can I seek the things above? If you have been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things above and set your mind on the things above. Look at verse 2. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. The battle always starts in the mind. This means literally think upward. Think heaven. See, Satan lays a trap for us of materialism, and it's easy to fall into that trap. We easily become distracted with work, school, meals, the kids' lessons, and activities. And the escape from that trap of worldliness is fixing your mind on the things above. And I have two suggestions for seeking and setting your mind on the things above. First, Meditate on Scripture. Meditate on Scripture. There was a New York Times bestseller about a man who claimed to have been to heaven and come back. But whatever stories we read, none of us has ever been to heaven and come back. The only thing we know about heaven is what is revealed in Scripture. So if you want to set your mind on the things above, then open your Bible 
and meditate on God's Word. This is the perfect time for that. Usually we have excuses. Oh, I'm busy. But now we have time. So take time for God's Word. Meditate on God's Word. Second, don't dwell on the contents of heaven, but reflect upon the King of heaven. Heaven is not attractive because of the things that are there. The streets of gold, the pearly gates, those will be wonderful, but heaven is beautiful because that is where Jesus is. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. He has all power and all authority. The amazing thing is that in some way, we have been raised up with him to the very company of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 says, But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We've been seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. As Christians, we have been adopted as children of God. We have the Holy Spirit. The lust and corruption of this world is still a temptation to us, but it no longer controls us. As Christians, our entire nature is like a compass, a compass set in the direction of Christ. Not just on Easter Sunday, but every day, even in the deep places of our minds. What are you doing to set your mind on Jesus? Are you reading and meditating on God's Word? Do you think about the Lord and talk about Him with your family and friends? Or are you reading and watching things which remove your thoughts from Christ? The truth is we are attracted to the world when Jesus ceases to be attractive to us. If you have lost your first love and the world seems attractive, spend some time reacquainting yourself with Jesus. The gospel becomes more precious to me as I share it with others. My love for God's word grows as I spend time reading it. Your love for Christ will grow as you spend time reading about him, praying to him, and praising him for all that he has done for you. The resurrection demands this heavenly perspective that we seek the things above and set our minds on the things above. The resurrection also promises a heavenly promotion. You are dead to the world. Colossians 3.3 3 tells us that. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Because of your new life in Christ, you are dead to the world. You are dead to the system. Everything that once seemed important to us now has no value. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says it this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. And Galatians 6, 14. But may it never be that I would boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Christians and the world have had a mutual breakup. The world has no place for us. To them, we're the biggest fools on earth. We're also a thorn in their side because our testimony convicts their conscience. So they want nothing to do with us. Christian, if the world has nothing to do with us, what have we to do with the world? Paul asks in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, What partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? What fellowship has light with darkness? What harmony has Christ with Satan? Christian, you are dead to the world. Let the world remain dead to you.
You're dead to the world. Your life is hidden with Christ. Again, verse 3. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. This means that the true nature and position of the Christian is concealed. The world cannot understand the Christian. They are blinded. Even ourselves, we know where our true life really is, but we cannot see it because our lives are not dependent on these physical bodies, but on Christ. Jesus says in John chapter 15, verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. The true nature and position of the Christian is concealed in Christ. It's not dependent on our physical bodies. It's dependent upon Christ. The Christian's life is also eternally secure in Christ. Psalm chapter 3, verse 3 says, But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. At one time our lives were forfeit because of sin. The penalty of sin is death. But if you are in Christ, your spiritual life, your very soul, is now hidden with Christ and God, who is a shield around you. Romans 8, 38 says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. As a Christian, you are dead to the world. Your life is hidden with Christ. And it goes on to say that your life is Christ. Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. You have everything you need in Christ. You are complete in him. You don't need worldly friends, worldly wisdom, worldly experience, worldly success. Christ is enough. Paul says in Philippians 1.21, For to me, to live is Christ. To live is Christ. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Christ is your life. He's the giver of life, the sustainer of life. He's also the object of our lives. He's our master. We live for him. All that we do should be done for him. And Christ is sufficient for all that we need. Colossians 2.10 And in him you have been made complete. We know all of this, and yet there is a sense in which it remains hidden. And the full extent of our life in Christ will only be revealed when he is revealed. Again, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. When Christ comes again in glory, believers will share with him in that glory all of the tears, the hardships, anything sacrificed for Christ will have all been worth it because we're going to see Christ. 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him, because we will see him just as he is. Because of the resurrection, we can look up to where Christ is. Christ is there. He is on his throne. But we can also look forward to his return when we will see Christ, and we will also see ourselves truly for the very first time. So as we reflect on last week's celebration of the resurrection, let me encourage you to set your mind on the things above with a heavenly perspective. As Christians, we've died with Christ and been raised with him. All that is alien and foreign to him should be foreign to us. William Barclay puts it this way, the Christian will see everything in the light of eternity. He will no longer live as if this world was all that mattered. 
He will have a new set of values, a new way of judging things, things which the world thought important, he will no longer worry about. He will go on doing the work of the world, but in a new way. He will set giving above getting, serving above ruling, forgiving above avenging. The Christian will see things not as they appear to men, but to God. Brothers and sisters, the resurrection is everything to us. Not only is Christ risen, but we have been raised with him to newness of life. The world is dead to us in all of its lusts. The resurrection means that our attitudes, our ambitions, all that we are is to be molded by our new life in Christ. And we can do so with joy because he's risen and he's coming back, just as he said. What a glorious day that will be when we see Jesus as he is. And we also see ourselves as we truly are because we will be glorified with him. We know these things. The task now is not to be distracted by the world around us, but to fix our minds on what we know and to keep seeking the things above because those are the things that truly matter. Father, it's a joy for us to remember and to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. We thank you for the new life that we have in him. We ask that you will protect us from the distractions of this world and help us to walk daily in the resurrected life, seeking the things above with our minds fixed on Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday.